Today, I'm going to be doing a lens shootout between these two incredible portrait lenses. The Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L versus the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L DS. And I'm gonna start right now. There are very few lenses on the market that are genuinely unique. And this lens here, the 85mm f1.2 DS, is one of them, offering a defocused smoothing element like no other lens, giving you beautiful background blur. But the question is, is it actually worth it? Today, I'm actually gonna be reviewing the non-DS and the DS lens to work out out of these two lenses here, which one is worth a spot in your photography camera bag. So first we'll have a look at the overall build quality and this is where these lenses are basically identical. Both of them have great build quality, they've got two switches on the side, an autofocus to manual focus switch and a focus limiter switch. They've got a small focus ring and a control ring and they also both come with weather sealing. To be honest with you, I actually really like the build quality of these lenses but there's no distinguishing factor between them. The only real difference you can actually see is this one here just says defocus smoothing. But otherwise, these lenses are actually identical. So because of that, both of them deserve a check mark in this round. Right, next, let's have a look at the overall sharpness of both the non-DS and the DS version to see if that defocus smoothing element causes any imperfections with the overall lens sharpness. So let's have a look at firstly f1.2. Let's have a look at the center first. We can see both of these lenses are really sharp straight away, pin sharp in the center. And if we have a look in the corners, you'll notice there's a little bit difference in brightness, but both of them are almost the same sharpness. I would probably say the non-DS version is slightly sharper, but by an absolute minuscule amount. So let this step these lenses down to F2. As you can see, both these lenses in the center are incredibly sharp. And then if we go ahead to the corners, you'll see it's almost, it's very difficult to distinguish. There's almost no difference between them. So let's get down to f2.8. We'll go back to the center again. You can see basically these lenses are pretty much identical. And then we'll jump over to the corners. And again, it's pretty much the same story. And it's the same story for f4, f5.6, f8. These lenses are remarkably similar, but wide open at f1.2, I would say the non-DS version is just ever so slightly sharper. So clearly that defocus smoothing element causes a tiny amount of loss of sharpness and contrast in the corners wide open at f1.2. So because of that, I would say the non-DS version is ever so slightly sharper, but by maybe 5%, almost indistinguishable depending on your photo. So because of that, I'm gonna give him the check mark to the non-DS version. Right, so let's have a look at distortion and vignetting next. So we have a look at these photos, wide open at f1.2. You can actually see there's a noticeable difference in vignetting on the non-DS versus the DS version. But both these lenses basically have no distortion to be seen. So if we step down to f2, we can see that the vignetting in the non-DS version has pretty much disappeared, but it pretty much looks the same in the DS version. Then if we go to f2.8, all of the vignetting has disappeared in the non-DS, but that DS definitely has vignetting in the very far corners, which actually doesn't disappear. If we step down to F4, F5.6, and even F8, that vignetting pretty much remains. So weirdly, the vignetting on the DS version is far worse than the non-DS version. So if vignetting is an issue, I would definitely buy the non-DS version, but both of these lenses have no vignetting when you go ahead and turn on peripheral illuminations which is something I recommend. But the optical performance of the non-DS version is better when it comes to distortion and vignetting, and that is what gets the check mark in this round. Right, next let's have a look at its overall macro ability and its close up image quality. So both these lenses have got identical minimum focus distance of 85 centimeters with a maximum reproduction ratio of 0.12. And both these lenses have really good close up image quality wide open at f1.2 and even if we step down to f2 and f2.8. So to be honest with you, both of these lenses score really high, but I would say that the minimum focus distance and the macro ability is slightly under average for a standard 85 mm prime lens. But both these lenses deserve a check mark for their close up image quality. So next let's have a look at bokeh and that's where these lenses really do excel versus other lenses thanks to their f1.2 aperture. But 
that is where the defocus smoothing element really comes into its own, offering beautiful background blur like no other lens. The best way I can describe it, it's like shooting on an f1.2, but you've almost got this Gaussian blur effect added to the background. Again, something that you can't necessarily recreate unless you go into Photoshop or Lightroom and actually add some kind of lens blur effect to your photos. It really is like having some kind of post-production effect built into the actual lens itself. It offers beautiful results, especially when you've actually got light sources in your photo. So if you're someone that likes that type of effect, you're going to love this defocus smoothing element in the 85mm. But to be honest with you, both of these lenses offer beautiful background blur. You're just getting that added extra beautiful creamy effect with this lens here. And actually, I would probably say it's probably got the best bokeh I've ever seen from any lens I've tested. And that is something really to write home about amazing image quality with the DS version. So because of that, I'm going to be giving two check marks to this lens here. Right, next let's have a look at flaring. And because of the amount of elements in these lenses, both of them suffer from quite bad flaring. I would say that you definitely need a lens hood if you are shooting towards the sun or any sort of bright lights. I try to distinguish the difference between the non-DS and the DS version, and to be honest with you, both of them suffer from almost identical flaring. So clearly, that DS element doesn't aid or remove from that flaring at all. So if flaring is an issue for you, I probably definitely recommend a lens hood, which you do get inside the box with both of these lenses. So neither of these lenses get a check mark in this round. Right, so let's move on to the all important size and weight. And that's where these lenses pretty much are identical. Both lenses come in really big and really heavy. The Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L comes in at 1.195 kilograms, where this lens here, the DS version, comes in at five grams more at 1.2 kilos. And as you can see, they are really big and really heavy. It will take up a, an enormous amount of room in your camera bag. And when you pick them up, you really don't notice that five gram difference. In fact, I'd pretty much say these lenses are identical. I really couldn't determine the difference. The only way to really see the difference between these lenses, like I was saying, is just this one says a defocus smoothing element on the front. But apart from that, size and weight aspect, I don't think either of these lenses deserve a check mark in this round. Okay, so let's move on to autofocus and what these lenses were like for photography and video. Now, if you've watched my previous reviews on either of these two lenses, you'll know that I actually own the older EF 85mm f1.2 Mark II. And realistically, you couldn't really use that in most environments. The autofocus was incredibly slow. And that's something I really noticed with these two lenses, the polar opposite. These were easily usable at f1.2 in both photography and video. But was there a distinguishing factor between them? Well, actually, I don't think so. There was a small difference. I would actually say that the autofocus on the non-DS version was a little bit quicker and it was more noticeable in video, but I had to really look the side-by-side -side comparison, almost going frame by frame to see when it went from out of focus to in focus. It was so difficult to, to differentiate the, between these two lenses. I'm actually gonna give them both a check mark in this round, simply because both of them are great when it comes to the overall autofocus in both photography and video. And last but not least is price. And as you can expect from two Canon RF 85mm f1.2 lenses, both these lenses are just insanely expensive. But there's actually a big price difference between the non-DS and DS version. Firstly, the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 L comes in a whopping £2,999. But secondhand, if we go and have a look at the MPB website, we'll be able to find some in reasonable condition between £1,700 to £1,900. Where if we go and have a look at the Canon RF 85mm f1.2 DS, that lens comes in a whopping £3,499. And secondhand, firstly, they're more difficult to find because there's less of them out there, but also you'll be paying another £500 more for that feature, coming in between £2,300 to £2,500. So you just have to work out as a photographer what is more important to you. Sure, both of these lenses are just really expensive, but one is significantly more, both brand new and secondhand. In fact, you could actually buy another Canon RF 85mm f2 macro for the price of that defocus smoothing element. So you've really got to work out, is that defocus smoothing element for you really worth it? 
For me, personally, I just think the price point or the price gap between them is just crazy. If they were similarly priced, then you could choose the difference between them. But yeah, out of these two lenses, the non-DS version far wins the value for money. Although do bear in mind that both these lenses are just, you're gonna have to earn significant money to afford either of these two. But one is just a little bit more expensive in the overall scheme of things. And because of that, the non-DS version wins my final check mark on my final round. Brilliant, and there we go. There is my in-depth lens shootout between these two incredible portrait lenses. But which one is deserving for a spot in your camera bag? Well, if you have a look at the final results, you get six with the non-DS version and an overall score of five for the DS version. So theoretically, this is the lens that you should have in your camera bag. And actually, I would also agree with you. Shooting with both of these two lenses, personally, I'd prefer shooting with the non-DS version. Although you're getting amazing bokeh with this lens here, you're getting that with the caveat of losing a stop of light, thanks to that DS version, which basically is like a neutral density filter built into the optical formula of this lens. I think if you're in control of your lighting, maybe you're a studio photographer or someone that uses a lot of flash, I actually think this is probably going to be the best portrait lens, your dream lens to buy. But that's a very niche style of photography. So for everyone else, including destination wedding photographers and wedding photographers like myself, I think the non-DS version I just think is definitely worth a spot in your camera bag. But of course, write down in the comments below, which lens out of these two would you choose? The non-DS or the DS version? Have you used both of these lenses? Which one is your favorite? Make sure to write it down in the comments below. I've been James for Photo Fever, and I'll catch you guys next time.